Hey guys, well, I'm out in the garage today and I'm just trying to get organized and uh, get ready to do the saddle for the Z-axis. Now we finished up the Z-axis in the last video and now I have, well, I have them all done. Uh, they all turned out really nice. They're, they glide really smooth and this is without any kind of lubrication really. Um, so you can tell that they're they're smooth however they're also uh, they feel you know rigid so really happy with the overall with the way these all turned out uh, the procedures that I went through to mount these worked out well there's some things that I probably might do different uh, on the next bill I was really concerned about trying to just be able to preserve the machine the way it was. Uh, on the next build, you could flatten these out and machine into the surfaces uh, instead of using the datums as I did, uh, using the flat par for datums. However, you got to bear in mind that at least on the base and the column, you've only got about maybe maximum three-eighths of an inch that you can uh, thread into and some places a little thinner some a little thicker but you have to keep that in consideration and if you machine down your surface there for a datum you're going to take away from that now I understand that in order to have full strength on a fastener you probably only need about five turns however the more material you have there, the better off I think you're going to be. So, Now I have seen others who have uh, just built a flat bar here, riser, mount it to the base, and then machine a datum into that piece. That is a, a route you can go. However, you're going to raise up your table, and if you do that on this, uh, your table here, put a, a spacer there and put a spacer here, you're going to lose that much distance in your Z height travel. Again, you could put a spacer on your column and make up for that difference. Um, there's a lot of different ways you could go about doing all this. This seemed to be the best route for me. And so far, it's worked out really well. Um, the bushings that I used to bore the holes worked. However, um, you do go through quite a few. So bear that in mind, um, because what happens is the hole gets kind of waddle, uh, oblonged. So you want to make several of these, and then once the bit starts to walk and waddle out, then your hole's not uh, as accurate. So uh, unless you can use something that's hardened, maybe a hardened bushing, but for these bolts, just make you a few of them, and then that way you can uh, swap them out when they start to. Uh, feel like they're wandering on you. Uh, yeah, overall, pretty good. Now, bear in mind, these are eight, uh, RG rails. If you went with HG rails, your tolerances aren't going to be as tight as with the RG rails, so you can get away with a little bit more uh, uh, inaccuracies, let's say. So now that I've got this wrapped up, I'm going to uh, start working on the Z-axis saddle. Now for the Z-axis saddle, I'm going to be using a piece of 775 aluminum, and I've got a nice big slab here. I should be able to get three saddles out of this actually, so it gives me a little room for error. I wanted to be able to have enough to, um, of course, make one but also to do the other machine so um, this allowed me to have enough to do both machines and give me a little bit just in case uh, now this is an inch and a quarter thick uh, stock and it's eight and a half inches by well this is probably 30 inches I can't remember exactly so I've got my saddle material here and the way I'm gonna go about the saddle for the z-axis is I'm just going to simply try to uh, basically copy what's already 
what I already have. So this is the steel saddle. And the way this worked was it had this uh, bung or pin that slid in like so. It had these two fasteners right there. And then on the back side, this would just hook to your ball screw uh, mechanism. So what I'm going to do is just, I'm going to remachine into my saddle a pocket like this. I'm going to reuse this piece and uh, I'll just do away with this piece. So I'll just basically go about it using the same method. Now this right here just goes right into your spindle or your uh, your head here and that's what holds it in place however we'll be machining a spacer to go on there uh, to extend that out I don't know exactly how much because I don't know what my distances are going to be with the uh, linear rail conversion so you can kind of see how I'm going to integrate this into the new saddle for the z-axis and I'm going to try to uh, start machine work on that uh, in the next week or so. So stay tuned for that. Guys, if you have any questions or suggestions, please feel free to comment. Comments are always welcome. If you want to support my channel and you like the videos that you see, please click on the subscribe button to subscribe to the channel. Uh, I try to post a video once a week, but I haven't been able to do that here lately. I've got a new exchange student that came in from Spain. And I've been uh, working on machining some parts and just a lot of things going on right now. My AC unit went out, so I had to work on that. And uh, it's too hot for your air conditioner to go out. Thanks for watching, guys. Please subscribe to the YouTube channel if you have not. Thanks for watching. And most importantly, be safe.